Hey, what's up everybody? This is your boy the e-bike guy. This is the e-bike guy channel and today we gotta be doing some upgrading to the brake system on the uh, 8000 watt beast as you can um, as you will see in a minute. Um, what happened is that um, I've been running the original uh, 160 millimeter rotors in the back and the 180 up front. So what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be uh, stalling some um, bigger rotors so we're going to be doing the uh, two, two or three millimeters front and, and, um, and rear. And also I got some new brake pads and I have an adapter plate. Now, fortunately, I ordered the the adapter plate for the front. Um, I looked on the Amazon website. It hasn't shipped out yet. So I'm going to try a different tactics. Um, but anyways, I do got the parts. I'm going to put a link in the description if y'all want to um, convert your, um, your rotors uh, up to a bigger size. So. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and um, show you the parts that I got and what we're going to be needing to do this. And you're going to go and um, you're going to be watching me um, installing these brake pads on the new bike on the on the bike. So that way we can uh, give it a test and see how good the brake system is. OK, so here. So here we go. And we're going to get right to it. All right. So here we go. We have the Shimano uh, brake disc, um, the mount adapter. And here's the part number. This is on Amazon. I paid eighteen dollars for this. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna put a link in the description of where you can you can get this. So we're gonna open the box, and uh, we got the uh, instruction manual. We're gonna put that to the side, and I think we're gonna have the um, the screws on this little baggie right here. And here's the bracket. Let's get a zoom. Let's zoom in on this right quick. All right. So here we go. So this is going to be facing uh, up towards the um, towards the top of the bike, and the caliber is going to be sitting on top of these here posts. And uh, like I say, this is I wanted the um, the Shimano for the front, but I didn't have enough money for that. So we're going to put that the way. And here we are. We got the new pads. Uh, we're going to open these up. So these are the new pads right here. That's the part number. BR4. This is what I need for um, the uh, the pads on that bike right there. Um, so right here you're gonna get um, you know two four pads two um, for the caliber, and um, you get that out right there. So we're gonna open it up, and here we are. So we got the um, the pads with the little heat sink on it. And that's what a, a little screw is going to go in to hold the, um, the um, pads in place of the caliber. And then we have this little, I guess you can call this a spring. So when you um, let go of the brake, um, the master cylinder the pressure, it actually pulls the brakes back. And plus, it, it causes the pads not to uh, vibrate or shake in the calibers. And then we have our little, our little carter pin right there. So... So that's what you get in the um in the little baggie or box right here. So this is what it is. Also gonna be a link in the description if you have those type of calibers that I have on that bike over there. And so here we are, we have the rotors. Now my god, these suckers are so big. <laughs> wow. So here's the part number here. A G3 disc rotor, 200 millimeters, and you can get that on Amazon too. I'll put a link in the description on these. Man, these things are freaking huge. I mean, I've been around the 160 millimeters and 180, but dang, the 203s. Holy crap, man. Like, I don't know if the video does any justice, man, but you got to see these in person, man. I mean, I, my hand is, is huge, man. And just, and, and it almost just, it almost swallows my hand right up, man. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited to uh, install these on the bike, and I'm I'm just excited to see what difference do these um these new rotors make for a stopping ghost. Because don't get me wrong, my my bike stops pretty dang good, you know what I mean. But I've been I've been seeing and being reading a lot that the uh, that the bigger rotors um, doesn't heat up as much. And you get more bite um, uh, to the to more braking force uh, to actually lock up the wheels 
and um, so I'm excited to get these on. And actually, these are these are $18, so you get two of these for $18 also on Amazon.com, uh, and I have the link in the description on these two as all as well. So we're gonna go ahead and get the bike down. Um, the wife's in there; she's mopping the floor because we're gonna do this in the kitchen because it is so hot. It is so hot outside. So I'm gonna be doing this in the kitchen now. The main part, the 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 really hardest part, is to get the hub motor off, and I gotta do all the cables and everything, and to get it to get that uh, rotor on right here. So, all right. So that said, we are going to go ahead and get the bike down, set up in the kitchen, get the tools, and we'll be right back. As you can see, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you the truth, guys. We're gonna start with the front one first, cause that's easy to do. Um, I wish we had the uh, quick release. Uh, mechanism on there. It's just a little bit better, but we got the we have the ratchet for it. Let me go get it right quick It's right here and So I got to get some zip ties and get the motor cable off which is Yeah, I get those on uh, nuts off 10 millimeter nuts and so we can get them uh, motor off stall the uh the uh, brake disc and see how that goes now this one's gonna be a little different because I don't have the adapter to go right here but since this is an this right here is a 180 adapter I might can get away with adding um, some washers or spacers I do have spacers in the backyard um, to uh, fit the uh, 203 millimeter uh, road in front but we're gonna try to take care of this right now and Unlike the other rotor, this one has really sharp edges, so you have to watch out when you get these um the uh, disc rotor from um you know when you order them because um I had I was spinning the wheel and I messed around and stuck my finger. Um, it was actually spinning this way, and I kind of stuck my finger right here, and that thing sliced my whole finger open. I'm like, oh man, so so we're gonna go ahead and um. See what we can do to get this out and um, and go ahead and install that rotor. And then we're gonna go ahead and install the pads. Now, like the other pads, we can just undo the bolt and this whole thing just slides out and we can put the um, new pads in. So, all right, we're just go get to it. All right, y'all. So as you can see here, we already got the uh, the nuts off and everything. Um, I do need to go and get the uh, rotor, the uh, caliber off right there so I can when I put the rotor in I can size up the caliber and see how much spacing I need to actually get this thing to work properly so so what we're gonna do we're gonna take the wheel off we're gonna take the wheel off and now we're gonna go ahead and take the uh, caliber off right quick so hold on just gotta go on my toolbox right quick y'all and uh and I get my darn Get my Allen set. There we go. All right, so get down here. Let's see, let's go ahead and take this on off right quick. I know, frankly, I'm about to add some more. Uh, I'm about to add some spacer on, on this uh, on this caliber right here, so y'all can see that. Uh, pass does look a little worn. That's because I think a lot of my subscribers was telling me that I need to upgrade my brake rotors because the uh, 160, 180 just is it's just not enough. It wasn't even enough for the QS205, and I'm putting the Q, QS273 on here. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where is our, uh, the so, belt? the what now? So, did, yeah, see? That should just slide right out just like that. So, we're going to leave that there. And, um, so, um, they're in the car, son. Yeah.
so yeah they're worn out so we're, we're gonna be throwing these away all right well we got new pads on the way and uh now we're gonna go ahead and get the road on there and and uh let's see man these suckers are huge yeah, these suckers are huge i mean look like almost like a 45 record <laughs> So, yeah. Let's see, what do I need for that? Is it a four? Let me see. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we got that. Now we're going to sit down and let me collaborate with y'all. Dang. It's a freaking monster, y'all. <laughs> I mean, let me let me just look look at the size difference. 180, 203. I mean, that is a significant big difference with um going um up in the rotor size. So Oh, these are star bits. Let's see if I can get those off. If not, then I go get my star bit. Dang. Okay. Let me go get my star bit right quick. These uh, DIY kits. So. This is a thousand kit. So it'll be really nice, though, know, saying that I can actually stop um, a little bit better because. Not only that, it's going to uh, approve the safety of the e-bike that, you know, you're riding on the sidewalk, and even though you're not doing nothing but like 15, 20 miles an hour, you're going to have those oncoming cars that, you know, doesn't stop. And it's real nice to actually, to stop. Yeah, like lock the brakes up, man. This is going to, this is going to work. That's why I'm upgrading to the, to the actual 203s instead of the 180s. The 180 right here. I got a 160 in the back. And and I got a 180 up front. But you can see the difference. Hold on. But yeah, I know I know y'all wanted me to do a video. That's why I put a post. I put a post out there, you know, me upgrading to the 203s. And I wanted to know if, if anybody wanted me to do a video on uh, me installing this. And uh and and see the differences. So look at that. So here's the this is a 180, and then here's a 203. So you see the difference? A much bigger rotor, much bigger rotor. So we have the arrows in the direction that we're gonna install this. So we're gonna install. You know, we're getting rid of the bling blings, y'all. I rather I rather have um reliability over looks any day. You know. So that way, that way we don't have to worry about um, getting hit or t boning somebody because we can't stop. I want to know if y'all did tell me your uh, experience on how well your e bike stopped. You know, especially um, if you having a fat tire e bike and a uh, and a decent hub motor. You know, like your 3,000 watt, 5,000 watt. Well, I know nobody's not going 8,000 watt, so I ain't even going to mention that. <sighs> Another thing, guys, I did have a lot of videos, but I had to reset my phone. And most of my footage got deleted, so I got to remake most of my videos over again. So I, apolog I do apologize if if I'm not making um, any videos right now. Like I say, because most of my footage got deleted with my phone. And, uh... So we're gonna tighten this up and then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna stall the wheel on and then we're gonna figure out how we're going to uh, size up that caliber so it would go on the uh, wheel. All right guys, so the front, we got these little spacers that you can pick up at uh, H Hardware. These little spacers right here, um, I think they're in the standard size. You only think you can get them in metric, but um, but you can go like Ace Hardware, uh, Rural King, depends on where you live. Uh, if you live up north, I think you got um, 
um, Hammond and all that stuff right there. And um, but but down here in the south, you know what I'm saying? You got like uh, those um, places like Trite Supply. And but but um, we're gonna pick these up. We um, I picked these up already, but we got to trim just a little bit off so that way it can fit. These are a little too high, it got the caliber sitting a little too high. So we're gonna trim just like almost like a, a quarter of an inch off of each one so that way it can um, so we can sit this on the caliber and everything. So I got my little I got my grinder here. I mean, uh, my grinder and my clamp. I got a lot of stuff, excuse me, y'all, but I got a lot of stuff on the uh on the bench here so we're gonna try to put one of these in and just enough so that way we can um cut exactly what we need off so we're gonna do that right quick and we're gonna go ahead and plug it up mm. plug that bad boy up All right, so let's see here. So we're gonna trim about that much off right quick. All right, so we're gonna cool these down right quick and we're gonna go back in the house and um, size them up right quick. I right, go right here and get some uh, nuts and bolts. So I got me a, I got me a bolt right here for the, for the spacing. That should fit in there. No, I don't need that. That's too long now. I might have some right here now since I had to cut some off. So we're gonna, let's see here. That's too short. Oh, there we are. These should be just right. Yep, just right. Okay. So I have two bolts. Yep, all right, we're good. All right, so now we have the big 203 in the front. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and um, do the one in the in the back. Uh, that's the hardest part. Um, I gotta go get a Phillips screwdriver and take the motor face cables off, and then the whole motor's gonna come off. Well, we're gonna do it right here on the floor and pop that bad boy back in. And uh, we're gonna put the Shimano um, the adapter in on this side. And um, but I might end up putting the rotor on first, flip the bike over, and then put the adapter on. I think that'd be a better idea. So. But this one is nice and set. As you can see, you can't really get a good look at it, but it is actually straight. Um, we got the new pads in. Um, I had to add a spacer on this little washer right here. I had to add two on this side, so that way the uh, so that way we have an even contact points on on the rotor. It is rubbing just a little bit, but like I say, it's everything's new. Huh? I don't think watermelon's supposed to taste like that. Uh-huh. So. So anyways, um, this is the one of the annoying parts right here is that we have to um, undo the motor cable so that way I can take the, um, take it off and do the, uh, do the um, brake road in the rear. But... I'm thinking about guys, I'm thinking about doing this is to um, order me a controller box because I have enough room right here to put a controller box and I was going to take the, the uh, controller and flip it around so that way all the wires be facing this way and then loop the wires up on the crank, the crank tube into the controller box so that way I won't have all this clutter right here. So tell me guys what y'all think, should I do it or should I leave it as is? I think 90% of y'all is going, is going to tell me to go ahead and route everything over here, um, which I'll do, but I just want to hear what y'all opinions is on this, uh, on this build right here because I wanted to make it a little bit clean, cleaner as possible. And, and I think it'll be protected so when I do wash the bike, I won't have all these um, wires just hanging right here. So, so that's what I want to do. So I'm gonna get the motor cable. I'm gonna go ahead and undo this. I don't have, I need the 10. So let me go and get the 10 and get that off. So, anyways. If anyone uh, decides they want to do um, a bike like this, um, 
and just make sure that you have your um your plans in order and what i mean or in order is make sure you have the battery to fit in the frame um make sure you have the torque arms um right on the dropouts all right so now we're going to get the motor cable undone and we're going to pass it up on the wires okay all right so that's free so i don't know so anyways we're going to go ahead and uh get the motor off and we're going to go ahead and put the rotor on and um we're gonna do it right here and i'll get back with y'all and then we'll flip the bike over and put the um the new pads and stuff on Whew. oh my god boy this hub motor right here is a pain i mean not really too much of a pain it's just you know just awkward sometimes when you know when you uh trying to get in and out of dropouts it's uh it's just it's just a pain but i guess when you get used to it it doesn't really matter i mean does it's not really much of a headache when you get used to it but man when you first when you first um do it you're gonna be like man jesus christ i have old rusty t20 and this should work let's see here all right let's see oh yeah it works okay <laughs> Holy crap, man. I thought that would have did it, but I guess not. So, it the torch bit started to twist on me. So it had started to twist on me. I had to get it off. So, I mean. so yeah, man. I'm going to get rid of these bling blings, man. I'm a, I, I don't need no more. I was going to... I like the whole red concept, but... And, and my favorite color is blue. But it's not, it's not really working you know how I want it and I want to shorten up that motor cable so when I do flip that controller around um, I'm just going to shorten it up so that way I can um, actually fit um, fit the controller and the motor without all that tangle and everything but that little piece that little T20 piece had broken inside the, um, in the uh, this here nut Hmm? What's that now? Yeah, we got it. Look at that. That little piece broke right in there, y'all. So, that's no good. So, let me, uh, that's what I get from using the wrong tools to do my projects. So, I'm going to say 160 to a 203 is going to be a big difference. And it won't it, and uh, the motor won't look so freaking huge um, to this uh, rotor because this is a 160 in the back. What's that? So carefully, because I got washers. Washers right here. We're gonna pull that up. Hall phase sensors. So we got that out. Now we're going to add, add this. Arrows facing up. I noticed that this one weighs a little bit more than uh than the uh, the floating rotors. I noticed that. Hmm. Alright, so where we at? Okay. There we go. Holy crap, man. It does. Look at that. Oh, I know it's. Look at that. Look how big that is. Compared to this little thing in my drink. Look at that. That's your right disc. That's a new one. Hopefully, it'll do better. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, I think it will. But, man, what a huge difference that this makes. I mean, it even looks crazy. It looks good. It looks it looks beefy. It looks like it's going to really do some stopping. I'm already liking it. 
It looks like one of those. Uh, so, what do the stealth bomber clones use when they when they use the two hundred three and I mean two hundred five and the Q set um the QS two seventy three? Do they use the two twenties or the two hundred threes also? Yeah, let me know in the comments. So <laughs> what? Oh, uh, wow, that's huge. All right, so I got the uh, Kalani, let's go. the wires on. I got them all taped up and everything. She's but like I say, I'm really, I'm really oh, wanting sorry. to. Uh, you good? I really want to put the um, all this stuff down in a uh, a little box behind the wheel, and I think that'd be more better. It just look more better still having all these wires uh, all crowded like this, you know. So let me know what y'all think about that. And also, so here is the front wheel. Like I say, I had to put a spacer from here, from um, and I got these like I say from Ace Hardware because that's the only store that's local to our, um to my house. So I have one right here with one washer, and a spacer here with two washers. And on the back, this bracket was so good that I didn't really need no um spacers on this. So I just use um what's up? Oh, come on, come on, go. So I had um I got my new pads on. I got my spacers here, but I did have to add a washer because um, the caliber was, was touching the rotor on the uh, on the pad that's closest to the motor, and had just asked washers here and here. And but other other than that, this um, bracket right here from Shimano, it's a really good bracket. I didn't even have to use no um, no washers um, from the uh, base of the caliber to the um, bracket, so we did good. And it actually makes the motor look. It looks better to tell you the truth. Um, it's a huge rotor. I mean, by a long shot. I mean, compared to my the one sixty was in the back. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a test ride. Yeah, you're gonna go. My son just got got done swimming. So yeah, we're gonna go right into uh, my buddy Roy's house. But I'm gonna do a, a brake check right quick, just to see everything's working. And then we're gonna go um, uh, e bike riding with my buddy Roy. So go ahead and get dressed, boy. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, so here we are. We're uh, testing out the brakes. And uh, I got to break them in right quick. So that's all we're going to be doing right now. We're going to go ahead and break them in. I'm going to put it on like two because I usually travel between um, 20 to 35 miles an hour, especially when I ride my kids. And I can tell you right now, man, I can tell you right now, man, the stopping power is way, way better. I mean, Jesus, we're going to. Yeah, man. So uh, we're going to just go ahead and break them in right quick. <sighs> Let's see, where to, where to do this at? Okay. Let me, uh. I know one thing, uh, the new pads and the new brakes feels already incredible, man. It's not, it's not as, it's not as spongy as my other ones. I guess because of the brake fade and everything. So we're gonna take a trip down here, just kind of get them, just kind of get them um, broken in just a little bit, because I know they'll stop a little bit better uh, once they're broken in. But I can tell you one now that I don't have to put as much effort. Or um, I don't have to put too much grip on the um, the brake levers to actually slow it down. So what we're gonna be doing? We're just gonna just uh, ride, do a little ride and slow it down, get them broken in, and we're gonna. Wow, yeah. Damn, that was. <laughs> I was just trying to slow down, but it actually stopped me like crazy. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Holy crap, man! Yeah, don't do it too much. You're gonna you're gonna mess around and uh, go over the damn bars. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> okay, hold on. Holy! Shit. Holy mother! Dang, I gotta be careful. Oh, I gotta be careful to slow down, man. I might end up over the handlebar if I press too far on the 
on the uh, front brakes. <laughs> Dang. I just hope it don't have to come to that where I have to use the uh, the brakes like that to stop. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. Okay, so I see what's going on. So the brakes needs to be adjusted just a tad because they rubbing I thought I had it adjusted already, but I guess not. So we're gonna adjust them right quick before we head out. And then I had problems with the front. I had way too much brake fluid in it and it wasn't releasing the pressure off the, the um, pad. So I had to kind of um, kind of ride it back here to, uh, to get that pressure off of it. So that's what I'm doing right now is trying to, uh, well, I'm trying to just get these straight right here because I say and one side was rubbing the other side wasn't so I just want to get this um, nice and even right quick and my boy Chicoy he's gonna ride with us uh, today to uh, my buddy's house Let's see how that ride and see how that gets right there and um, let's see that sounds about right okay Put that back because my boys he's gonna ride with us we're just gonna go cruise for a little minute and that's right Jacoy. What? i said we're gonna go cruise for a minute yeah. yeah so all right ready so i got a little brake rub but that should it should wear off a little bit though <laughs> yeah, it sounds terrible too. So, <laughs> anyhow, <laughs> excuse me. Let's see here. Whoa! Oh. Okay, so I see what's going on. Huh, okay. All right, let me go to my friends. I'll see what we can do to, uh, to correct that right quick. All right. They do lock up. That, for God, honest truth, they are locking up. And that's what I want right there. Yeah, they're locking up bad. They're locking up good. I mean, say, real good. There is Roy right there. Go ahead, go across. <laughs> so I got here and everything and um so we're having issues with the <clears throat> rear brake caliber is that um now the caliber is creating so much force um creates so much stopping power that it's actually um it's actually moving these these are not strong enough to hold this um bracket in place so I might have to do some um do some manufacturing for these uh these spaces to be held in place without so much flex because it's actually flexing uh, right here now and uh, so I gotta figure out how to how to stop that from from happening because the, the, the brakes are working fine it's locking up now but it's actually it's actually creating so much force that it's bending and it's actually rubbing on my motor per se so as you can see right there it's rubbing I don't, I don't like that so I gotta figure something else out before I um, actually give it a uh, full test on this thing. Okay, so we're in my buddy's house and everything, and uh, he saw it too. I showed him what was going on. So we got the caliber back off. And what's going on that these are actually flexing. They're actually bending. You can't really do it yourself, but they're actually flexing because of the, the um, caliber is putting so much braking force on this rotor. And uh, so what we're gonna do is try to alleviate the problem is we're gonna uh, weld some uh, bar right here and then we're gonna bend it and attach it to the to the frame and weld it right here and then hopefully that should alleviate some of the uh, flexing 
So I'm crossing my fingers um, that it works, you no know saying? Because this is so far out, you know what I mean? The, the leverage is, is is way out there, man. And it's bending, it's actually bending these screws. It's not so much the dropout itself, but it's just actually bending these screws, so, or the um the bolt. So we're gonna try to get that um done right quick. So I'm gonna be using the welder. I'm gonna use the grinder, uh, cut this to spec right here. And then I got the welder over there. Um, I'm gonna turn on everything and we're gonna start uh, mocking this up and welding it, you know what I mean? And cause th this is gonna be kind of permanent right here, you know. If I, I can always remove this and this hub motor is gonna be there. And if I do have to move it, remove it and put it back stock again, I can just take grind these off right here and stuff like that. So, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and I'll get that done because I do want these brakes to work good because they is actually working phenomenal. So, all right, we're gonna get to it. All right, so here's my little contraction right here. So uh, what I did, I just welded a piece of bar right here, and then I bent it over and attached it to the frame. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to smove all this out, and I'm going to paint this. I'm going to take the caliber off and everything, take the bracket off, uh, cover the uh, the um, rotor up, and I'm going to paint over this and everything so that way it look a little bit neater than what it is right now. So. Uh, so far so good I tested the brace it's not nowhere near as much flex as it uh, used to so we're gonna go ahead and test it down the road right quick and uh, see how it works so there's a lot of rubbing going on with the uh, brakes but I guarantee you not they're stopping a lot better It's just the rubbing on the back. The, the cow is not touching, it just got a little humming noise. So I don't know if I didn't um, touch the rotor with uh, my fingers and everything. So now I'm actually trying to get going with it and hopefully take the three right quick. They're stopping, boy. They're stopping like crazy. So maybe I just need to break them in. I don't hear the humming noise now. I really don't. But my God, boy. So much improvement. Now, you don't, I don't think you might have to do this to your uh, calibers. It is, um, I don't know if anybody even going to think about putting a 273 on a hardtail mountain bike, but um, you shouldn't have a problem with a QS205 because um, their axle is a lot shorter than um, than a QS273. Well, we're gonna kick it into high gear and see, just to give it some brake ends and stuff. Oh yeah, holy crap, holy crap, yeah, they, they locking the back tires up. That's what I want, that's what I want. Yeah, that's a big difference, I'm telling you, let me see. Yeah, cause see the other, other, I can't believe it man, how upgrade from a 160 in the rear to a 203 in the rear, how so much uh, difference in the braking, it's crazy. thing boy you hit the front brakes the wrong way boy you're going over the handlebars holy crap oh wow man that is phenomenal man about the front brakes i'm just happy the back brakes even lock up so we're going to do one more we're going to do a skid test oh my yes Wow, they, they locking the back brakes up, man. If you press them hard enough, they will lock the back brakes up. And that's what I want. So I think this is a, I believe this is a job well done. To tell you the truth, other than the flexing from the, um, the uh, caliber so far out that the screws couldn't really handle that tensile strength um, of the um, 
the breaking force of the, the bigger rotor. So, but I think we nailed that, nailed that in the bud right there by adding that piece of steel right there. And like I said, well, I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna paint that as soon as I get to the house. Oh, that's my buddy got some spray paint. So that way it'll look a little more better. They'll look better than everything, but yeah, the rotors are, yeah, I like them. Other than the noise, man, it's, it's doing good. Yeah, they locking up, I'm gonna. All right, we're doing a brake test. Sorry. <laughs> I was trying to wait till I got out here, but they're locking up the wheels now. Yeah, they're locking up now. So, yeah, so it, it took all that flexing off. So. You end up putting the plate on it? Yeah, I did. Yeah, right here. Smart. Daddy, stop again. So I welded there, here up under there, and then I welded to the frame, and it took all that flexing off. we go so we got the spray paint on looks a little better and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, caliper back on there get the boats tightened up and um, we're gonna try again and we all gonna go for a ride so everybody's ready to go for a ride we got the 1000 watt over there my son's gonna go uh, with his 5000 watt e-bike and then my son my youngest son over there with his 1500 watt e-bike and yeah we're gonna yeah you're right there and playing with his uh, friends and everything so and the brakes, like I said, the brakes are working incredible. The brakes are working so good, man. I, if you hit them, if you hit them too hard, the front brakes, you're gonna go over the handlebars. I mean, it, it actually diving. I mean, <laughs> and then actually locking the back tire up. So that's what I want. So yeah, here's my initial uh, final thoughts and everything on the uh, 203 millimeter um, rotors um, on the back and at the front. Um, as you can see that I had a lot of uh, uh, flex coming from these here um, boats. So what I did, I had to um, weld a piece of bar on, on top of these here um, spacers and, and weld it, the uh, remaining piece right here on the frame. So it's on top, the top and bottom. And I just uh, got some spray paint and paint over them. And that eliminated a lot of that flex. I mean, actually there's zero flex now. So I didn't have that caliber rubbing on my um, rotor uh, no more. So it has some brake noise, a lot of brake noise in the back. And I tried to adjust the brakes uh, numerous of times to have that brake noise stop. So I don't know if I had hand oil on my hands or some, some, something happened. But those were new um, pads on there. Maybe the different pads. I don't know. But, but I had horrible brake noise like... It just like a, it's, it it sounded like a, a witch, a screaming banshee or something like that. So um, I had no noise up the front, but just on the back. And um, so I literally had to ride this thing at least at least a good seven miles. And I'm talking about doing about 45, 50 miles an hour. And then I slowly adjust the brake force um, to stop the. Um, the screaming or the, just the hurting bike here and um and it finally stopped it actually stopped at all and it actually and it actually locking the back wheel up i mean literally locking it up and on the front it's so powerful that it will actually um it will actually dive on you, you know saying so if you press it hard enough it will actually um lock the front brakes up which is scary but anyways um but they're working really good huge upgrade you might not have to do a lot of uh, modifications to the back like i did but like i say it was so far the caliber was so far in towards the motor and the dropout was so far out that i had to use the spacer because if i had to go in the little if i had to put more spacers on the rotor to bring it out more it'd be interfering with the cable what you see right here and i didn't want that these uh little screws to be rubbing on that cable so that's why I'd rather afford to stay in a little bit like I did. I know that was a little wire, there's a little key that goes right here, but I don't really don't use it because um I don't know, I just don't use it. But major upgrade. 
a hundred percent major upgrade. Uh, it increases the stopping stopping power. I mean, at least a hundred times. I don't know why they do this in the first begin with, but there you have it. Like I say, I will put the parts in the description from Amazon. Um, this here um, bracket from Shimano and um, and the rotors too, as a, as a matter of fact. So they fit on there with um, almost to little modifications. And I am happy that I had done that, you know what I'm saying? Other than the brake noise, but which finally stopped, I'm happy about it. So I'm going to be doing a, the brake upgrades to uh, e-bike kid's bike. We're going hydraulic on his. But I'm gonna let those stay 160 because they actually locking his um, back tire up with no problem. And my boys, I'm gonna do his. I'm gonna do um, 203s also on his. So, but that's it. No. And um, if you have any questions or comments or anything, uh, let me know, and and I will listen and, and see what we can do and discuss it and everything. So, all right, this is your boy E Bike Guy. And until then, I'll be having more videos coming up soon, and um, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.